And first of all, before I begin my testimony, I'd just like to thank my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, for what He did in my life about 13 years ago. This morning I read that He was rich and that He became poor for my sake so that I could be made rich in Him. And if it wasn't for Him, I wouldn't be here today with my wife and my children. He's been a, a tremendous Savior and guide in my life for many years. To begin, um, I grew up in Africa. I was born and raised there. went to church since before I was born, actually. My parents raised me in a godly home. Um, we uh, moved to South Africa after we lived in Zimbabwe for five years. And when I was young, I was afraid of hell. I made some professions of faith, but I didn't have any victory over sin. I just sort of did it as an uh, escape out of hell, if you will, when I was young. And uh, we came to this country, America, in 1987, continued going to church. Um, and I didn't read my Bible much. I sort of did my own thing, wasn't interested in spiritual matters. And then I went to college in 1994 to 1998. And then coming out of college in 1998, some things started to take place that were out of my control. And this gets really exciting. So the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And because of what I was doing in college, and after I came out of college, I was certainly not a new creature in Christ. I was doing my own thing and uh, wasn't interested much in spiritual matters. And uh, I got a call from a company uh, named Lutron and they asked me to interview. They ended up giving me a job uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. So I just moved out to Pennsylvania and uh, ended up going to an apartment complex that I wasn't really looking for a specific spot, but just pick one randomly and moved in there. And as I was moving in, my stepbrother said, Graham, there's a church down the road and it was about five minutes down the road. You should try go there. And my mom called me, this is in September of 1998, Graham, you should probably go to church. I thought, oh, okay, you know, I'll go. And I remember coming to Lehigh Valley Baptist Church in September of 1998 and sitting there by myself, a little scared, and I started hearing preaching um, in the Bible, and I was under deep conviction of sin, like I've never been before. I knew I was wrong before God, and I had sinned against Him. Uh, pastor Roland, then was the pastor's son, spent time with me and went through the Bible with me and showed me what Jesus Christ had done for me on the cross. And I knew that I needed Him to trust Him. I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't um, ready to admit that I wasn't saved. I was really struggling with this. And as the weeks rolled by, I was under more conviction that I needed to be saved. I remember the night before, this was January 9, uh, 1999, um, I needed to trust Christ. So the next morning, I got up January 10, 1999, went to church, and I, all I could remember is I've got, I need to be saved. I need to trust Christ. So that day, um, Pastor Hammett preached. I came down, and I went with Pastor Roland and asked Christ to save me and turn from my sins, and He saved me that day, and I praise Him for that. And after this happened, um, God started working in my life in ways that, um, th that were incredible. Let me give you some examples. Uh, first of all, there were some things I was involved in that were not right before God, and I knew they were not, and God said, Graham, you need to confess your sin to these people, and you need to get it right. And I remember that night, He gave me this verse. This is in Luke 15. And He arose and came to His Father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And God was saying to me, Graham, if you confess your sins to this person, you're going to be forgiven. And I trusted him on that and then went and confessed what I'd done to this person. And they forgave me right away. And I was very thankful for that. Um, and then I knew that God had also forgiven me of my sins because of other people forgiving me. And that night... Uh, this is uh, another verse God gave me. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Psalm 90. That verse was very special to me as I knew that God had forgiven me of my sins and that He had come through and allowed me to have victory um, in, in those areas. And as the years rolled by, um, I struggled sometimes knowing for sure that I was really saved. And I would go back to the Lord and ask Him, God, show me your word. And some verses came, and this verse happened a few times to me. I'll read it. This is Isaiah 49. I love this verse. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. I love that verse. And then this other verse just recently here. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee and thou shalt be built. And then on Isaiah 43, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. And I challenge you today that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. There's no other name 
given among men whereby we must be saved. And in trusting in Him, you can have eternal life and you can know it and not only be saved, but have a life that is uh, one that you can live for the Lord. And not only that, but have a hope of eternal life. It is incredible. And I urge you to put your trust in Christ.